Right now, live at 5. How rain is a sign of hope as drought conditions are impacting Northland farms. In Duluth, police are asking for your help in identifying an armed robbery suspect. Plus, if you're looking to cross the border to our north, Canadian officials are sharing some good news. And later, we're talking Christmas in July as Bentleyville unveils a massive snowman that's coming to town. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Virginia, Minnesota tonight, where the region did receive some much-needed rain today. But despite that, those drought conditions continue here in the Northland, and local farmers are feeling the punch. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. Today, CBS 3's Emma Quinn spoke with owners of an Iron Range cattle farm about the struggles they're facing. Here at Hellstrom Farms in Hibbing, Rain Monday morning was a sign of hope as drought conditions have made it hard to keep cattle alive. Jason Hellstrom is a fifth generation owner of the farm. He says they have more than 200 cows right now. He eventually sells them to distributors for beef. Hellstrom's cows are all grass fed, but with dry conditions, there's little for them to eat. The cows also eat hay, but due to the drought, there's been a shortage of hay to purchase. Hellstrom says Monday's rain is good news, but it will only help so much. Well, it's definitely going to help. It just may be too little, too late. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, even if we get an inch through this, it's, that grass will definitely respond. Hellstrom adds if these dry conditions continue into next summer, he won't be able to keep all of his cattle. Hellstrom says on most summers, they're dealing with too much rain and moisture. So this year, it's been a learning curve. Thank you, Emma. And tonight at 6, Minnesota Department of Agriculture officials share their concerns and what these dry conditions could mean for Northland farmers if they continue. And farmers aren't the only ones watching the skies. Crews fighting wildfires on both sides of the border are paying close attention to this week's forecast. On the Minnesota side, the Delta Lake fire is burning about 62 acres in the Boundary Waters. It's now about 10% contained. There are seven fires burning on the Canadian side of the Quetico Wilderness. Three of those have the potential of spreading across the border. And today they're worried about the chance of lightning and gusty winds later this week. Well, Dave is here to join us for a first check of the weather. And Dave, some good news for folks who saw some of that rain. I saw all over social media, people were very mm -hmm. excited about it. Yeah, very excited. Speaking of social media, here's a picture coming in from Ely. Dave Schmidt, Wolfland Computers, right out the door on Sheridan Street, had to take a picture of the rain. It's so rare now, we're excited about pictures of rain. And maybe we'll get a little more tonight. There's still a chance for more. And another round could come on Wednesday. But when I show the chart that shows how much could come down, eh, you may lose a little bit of enthusiasm. Two low-pressure systems. Frankly, the one here today is coming earlier than I thought. When we last met on Friday, I thought we'd get a Wednesday rain chance. That's still on tap. That's that low-pressure system over towards Montana. But this surprise one in our area bringing some blessed relief to a couple of towns. I'll show some uh, rain totals that have already fallen here in the main weather segment, but right now I'll show the short-term forecast, which says there's a 30 to 40 percent chance for more of this rain tonight with lows near 60. Then an easterly wind with these lows kicks in tomorrow, and the 90s go away. We'll cool down. Low 70s by the lake. What will we get inland? It will be a little bit warmer. Really hot warm or just warm? Uh, we'll show you which way the wind blows here with this weatherman in a few more minutes. Thank you, Dave. After 16 months, Canada will begin letting fully vaccinated Americans back into the country. That will start August 9th, and people from the rest of the world can return on September 7th. Canada's public safety minister says a date for the U.S. to allow fully vaccinated Canadians to cross the land border has not been set yet. Any Canadian can fly to the U.S. The Duluth City Council has a number of hot ticket items on tonight's agenda. The council is expected to weigh in on Mayor Emily Larson's plans for spending $58 million in federal COVID relief funding. That was tabled during their last meeting. Councillors will also approve a grant agreement for $235,000 for redeveloping the former St. Louis County Jail into mixed-income apartments. Also on the agenda tonight, 
rezoning land at the end of Vassar Road in the Upper Woodland neighborhood. The plan is to create space for up to 30 homes. Some community members are worried that could impact the nearby Amity Creek watershed and decrease green space. That meeting is set for 7 o'clock tonight. You can find a link to, on where to watch it on our website. And we'll, of course, have a full rundown of what was discussed and decided tonight at 10. Duluth Mayor joined a group of Minnesota leaders urging the state's congressional delegation to support the infrastructure deal working its way through Washington. Mayor Emily Larson, along with other mayors and business leaders, discussed the $1.2 trillion bipartisan plan. It would invest in roads, bridges, and public transit over the next eight years. In Duluth, the mayor would like to see money for port and highway improvements. She says the plan will benefit communities across the state. A pothole, uh, broadband, uh, these are not Republican or Democrat issues. These are not about whether you're in the majority or the minority. These are the everyday things that make life possible for people across the country. Larson also touted the bill's efforts to address climate change. She says Duluth's infrastructure has already seen significant impacts from the changing climate and the city needs to prepare more for it. The Biden administration made the deal with a bipartisan group of senators. Neither the U.S. House or Senate has voted on it yet. A murder investigation is underway after part of a missing man's body was found in Lake Superior. Richard Balsamo of St. Paul was reported missing last month. Authorities recently got a tip from the 34-year-old's that the 34-year-old's body had been cut up and dumped into Lake Superior near Grand Portage in far northeast Minnesota. It's also where state investigators and St. Louis County Sheriff's officials centered their search last Thursday. They found a bag containing a human torso with a gunshot wound on the shore. An ID card with Balsamo's name on it was in the pants pocket. They also found a bucket at the bottom of the water. And those items were sent to the medical examiner who ruled his death a homicide. A Duluth man, Robert West, is, has been charged with aiding an offender and interfering with a dead body. According to court documents, he admitted to police he helped another man dispose of Balsamo's body when he was out on a charter boat. Authorities have not identified the person responsible for Balsamo's murder or if they have been charged. They also haven't said what led up to the murder or if the people involved knew each other. We'll keep following this story and bring you updates as they come in. The Duluth police officer who shot a man through a closed door won't be going to trial until next year. Tyle Liebfried faces two felony charges. The shooting happened at a downtown Duluth apartment in September of 2020. Body camera video from the night shows Liebfried fired six shots through a closed door. A bullet struck Jared File in the shoulder. The St. Louis County attorney charged Liebfried with intentional discharge that endangers safety and reckless discharge of a firearm. In a court appearance today, the judge set Liebfried's trial date for January 18th of next year. It's scheduled to take four days. Duluth police need your help after an armed robbery at a Lincoln Park gas station. Police shared this photo of the suspect. They say the person threatened a quick trip employee with a knife Wednesday night just before 8 p.m. Police say the suspect then ran from the store at 27th Avenue West and Michigan Street. Anyone with information about the incident or the suspect pictured are asked to call the Violent Crimes Task Force. We'll have that number on our website. Still to come on Live at 5, an organization that connects and provides opportunities for women in construction is looking to expand to the Northland. More on that as we take you around the Northland after the break. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. Get your news on the go, the CBS 3 mobile app. There are a lot of choices when it comes to automotive care, but how can you find someone you trust? At East End Auto, our customers have trusted us for the past 20 years to provide them with the best auto care. As your area's full-service repair shop, with the most modern equipment available to us, and backed by a two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty, honesty is what our customer relationships are built upon. Locally family-owned and operated, stop out to see why East End Auto is the community's trusted auto repair home.
Hi, I'm Dr. John Bolins. And I'm Ann Nolette. And we're Advanced Surgical Associates of Northern Minnesota. Our goal has always been to provide the latest and best surgical techniques to you and your family. We want to provide an alternative to the traditional surgical practices that the hospitals offer. With robotic assisted surgery, you're likely to have a shorter hospital stay, experience less pain, and recover quicker. We serve Duluth, Ely, Hibbing, and the surrounding areas. Learn more at mnsurgery.com or give us a call today. Hi, I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. We are starting summer out with a great special on all our bathroom products. Right now, you can get 20% off your entire project and zero down, zero interest, and zero payments until 2023. Get your project off your to-do list now and not pay for it until later. Go to bathplanet.com or call us today to take advantage of this amazing offer. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. Breaking news, original reporting. How do you hope to change the world? And the good things in life. Live music right. and variety. Where are you going to get that? Here. Join Jeff Floor, Dana Jacobson, and Michelle Miller on CBS This Morning, Saturday. This show is about connection. Not even 2020 and socially distancing ourselves are going to get in the way of that. Woo! The Kelly Clarkson Show on CBS 3. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Park Point tonight. And as a reminder, today kicks off Water Safety Week. And tonight is the Sand Modeling Contest on Park Point. And tomorrow, the city and first responders will host the Water Safety Expo. Dave will join us in just a few minutes with this week's full forecast. But first, let's take a look around the region. A national night out event is announced on the Iron Range, and a 40th annual event is set to return this weekend. All of that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. We kick things off here in Duluth tonight, where the National Association of Women in Construction is hoping to create a fourth Minnesota chapter. The goal is to support women in the construction field in the Twin Ports and Iron Range areas. The group provides members education and networking opportunities, skills training, and more. For those interested in joining and starting the chapter, informational meetings will be held in August and September, and we will have a link on our website with more details. Next, we head to Worry Township, where they announced today they'll be hosting a National Night Out event this August. National Night Out is celebrated the first Tuesday in August every year and strives to promote community relationships with public safety departments and community members. St. Louis County deputies will be at the Worry Community Center with kid-friendly events and a free community barbecue. The night will also feature a LifeLink helicopter landing. And we'll wrap up in Ely tonight, where this week is Blueberry Festival Week. Events kicked off last week with Operation Blueberry, so be, to, be sure to visit participating local businesses with deals and specials running through Sunday. Then this Friday through Sunday, the 40th Annual Blueberry Art Festival will be held in Whiteside Park. Around 200 arts and craft vendors, as well as several food vendors, will be out celebrating the return of the annual summer event. We will have a link on our website with more information. And try the blueberry beer if you get to. <laughs> if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland, city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, who's ready for winter? Not me, but Bentleyville is asking for community help to add a big new addition this year. We'll have the details in a few minutes. Here's our almanac, and the National Weather Service is updating it at the moment, so it's missing some data. Hopefully by 6 we have everything we need, but right now we can still see that the normal high is 78 today. We were on our way to 90 again, but then cloud cover came in with a chance of rain that paid off for a few places. And now tomorrow, an easterly wind will take us to cooler than normal conditions for half the region. So who's going to be warm, who will be cool? I'll show you with my latest round of maps here coming up after our...
This is the internet that keeps the TV streaming, the meetings zooming, the playlist flowing, and the doorbell showing. Anybody home? Who's coming and going? This is the internet that powers the workout, that does the homework, that makes the lights work, that makes for light work, and makes. Don't forget to pick up Charlie. Your life work. This is the internet that keeps it all connected and has hundreds of people who ensure it's protected. Nice try, hackers. This is the internet voted best because it's extreme, nothing less. Prime Appliances' sizzling hot summer sale continues on all in-stock appliances through July 31st. This GE Cafe 28 cubic foot quad door refrigerator, now only $38.95, save over $700. Or get a GE French door refrigerator in slate, black slate, or smudge-free stainless. Your choice, $27.99. Financing always available. Have our pros deliver and install or take it home today. Prime Appliance, the best place to buy your appliances. Let us prove it to you. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. Pre-order your 2022 Lund boat at RJ Sport Cycle. Well, rain is a sign of hope as drought conditions are impacting Northland farms. A low pressure system came early and brought some rain to some towns. I'll talk about how much more could come through midweek. Tonight at 6 on CBS 3. CBS 3 weather is brought to you by Economy Garages. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Yeah, frankly, I'm going to admit it. Today's rain chance was a surprise. I thought the low was going to hold off until Wednesday, but we so desperately need rain to err on the side of getting some rain. I don't think it's such a huge deal, a bad thing. And what kind of rain did we get? Well, as usual with thunderstorms, if you're right under a cumulonimbus cloud, you do pretty well. And if you're not, you don't get that much. So close to a half inch international falls, but only a trace in Grand Rapids. A third in Aiken, a half inch in Hibbing, about a tenth for my friends in Ely. And the rain chance hasn't touched a lot of other towns yet, but there's a 30 to 40 percent chance it will overnight tonight. Then we take a break tomorrow from the rain and get another shot from the planned low that's going to hit us on Wednesday. That's a 50-50 chance. Here's what's hitting us right now at the airport in Duluth. Current temp is 79 degrees, so the cloud cover helping to cool things down just a little bit. And tomorrow, an easterly wind will really add to the process. But at the moment, the wind is still westerly, and it's going 14 miles per hour. Air pressure, 30.09 inches of mercury, 1,019 millibars. At the surface, that's actually a little bit higher than normal, at least here in Duluth, up north, where the lows are closer, where our folks are closer to the lows, pressure readings are a little bit lower. Current temperatures, they are not bad at all. By the lake, only 71 in Grand Marais, 84 up the Gunflint. This is the time of year for temperatures in the 80s. A lot of folks do like that. We don't get it forever, but we have it now. 82 to 83 for the Upper Peninsula. I'm thinking 80 to 84, even 86, the range of current temps in northwestern Wisconsin. But with the cloud cover from the line of showers and storms, yeah, the Minnesota side of life, inland, is starting to come down into the 70s. Tomorrow, thanks to an easterly wind, lakeside communities will probably only be around 70. And then farther inland, about 80. And that's you know, 10 degrees cooler than the threat of 90. So, yeah, temps are coming down just a little bit. Rain coming down at the moment. Uh, it looks like the moment has passed for the time being. We see that line of storms coming down from the range towards the Twin Ports a little bit earlier here in the afternoon. Still, like I mentioned, a 30 to 40 percent chance this wobbling semi-stationary front will develop another round. But then we have to hope for, of course, things to come back on Wednesday with a second low pressure system that's already in Montana. So with two lows, how much more rain can we get on top of what we've received already? For some towns, frankly, not that much. A tenth for two harbors, maybe two more tenths for Hibbing, but another half inch could come around for Grand Rapids as we go through Thursday. And even Wisconsin will get uh, a tenth to a quarter of an inch, though the UP may pay off a little bit better, half inch to three quarters of an inch possible there. And again, that's from now through Thursday morning. And I, as usual, this offer subject to change, but this is what the latest data indicates the trends could be. And we're hopeful they pay off, because we need that rain. Tonight, Minnesota, 40% chance for showers and thunderstorms. Lows, I'm thinking about 56 to 65. For Wisconsin and Michigan, 30% chance for the precip. Lows there, 58 to 62. Tomorrow's high temps for uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, 68 to 71. But 78 down towards Hayward Cable and Trego and Spooner. Uh, Minnesota tomorrow, partly sunny. 
69 by the lake and 78 to 82 inland. Quick look at the extended forecast says there's that 50% chance for rain to come on Wednesday. Again, desperately needed. After that passes, it dries up again, Kristen, and warms up. I think the rest of the week will run 80 to 85, but... Right. You know, we deal in degrees in meteorology. Yeah. It will feel better than 85 to 90 a lot, of, a lot of places had yesterday. That's true. You know, I posted a video of some rain from this morning up in Hibbing on my mm -hmm. Instagram, and people were commenting back, I hope we get that rain here, too. Everybody is just wishing for it, so I'm glad to see it on the forecast again this week. Yeah, it's not a fantastic chance, but, you know, we doubled the odds from yeah. what I thought on Friday. That's true. I'll wipe that egg off my face and be glad for it. That's for sure. Thanks, Dave. Lakes, rivers, and streams in the Northland are facing record low water levels. According to the National Weather Service, water in the St. Louis River near Scanlon is at its lowest point in more than 100 years. The river level is now measuring just over two feet. And the average is between three and four feet. Joe Moore, a meteorologist with the NWS office in Duluth, says this isn't just a new problem. He's blaming these historic low water levels on dry months dating back over the last year. Drought really compounds. When we have a dry year, it takes a while for the environment to kind of get back to normal. And because we didn't really have enough rainfall late winter, early spring, um, the dry effects of 2020 have just compounded the effects in 2021. Moore says the summer outlook does not bode well for lakes and streams as we seem to be looking at more dry weather down the road. Well, even on one of the hottest days of the year, one of Duluth's best winter events needs your help making their season shine brighter. Bentleyville is teaming up with local companies to create one of the world's largest snowmen. The massive Frosty would have 250,000 LED lights, 90 tons of iron, and it would stand 120 feet tall. Organizers are asking for donations to create this new photo op for the Winter Wonderland. If you'd like to help, they have a link to donate on their website. And by the way, you still have time to submit your design ideas for the Bentleyville Hat Contest. They're taking submissions through Wednesday, with a winner being announced this Friday. The winner will have their design printed on 30,000 hats. You can find more details on our website. And Bentleyville opens November 20th. It's that time of the show where we get to talk about adoptable pets, and today's pet comes to us from Northwoods Humane Society in Hayward. Tonight we have not one, but a whole lot of kittens. They have male and female kittens in just about every color, and our friends at the shelter also tell us they are all very friendly and social so far. If you'd like to set up an appointment to adopt a kitten, then you can call the number on your screen. Still to come, the Olympics are only days away and some dreams are being stopped before reaching the finish line. How COVID is keeping some athletes and sponsors away after the break. Medicare Decomplicated, brought to you by UCARE. Question, can I keep my doctor with a UCARE Medicare plan? Yes. With 96% of all Minnesota providers in our network, it's more than likely you can keep your doctor. See, Decomplicated. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find your next adventure in a new Chevy. Make no monthly payments for the rest of the summer on all Silverado 1500 crew cab pickups. Plus, get 2.49% financing for 72 months and get $2,000 cash allowance. Hi folks, Joe Namath here, and if you're on Medicare, this is important. You're now entitled to eliminate co-pays and get dental care, dentures, eyeglasses, prescription coverage, in-home aids, unlimited transportation, and home-delivered meals, all at no additional cost. Plus, your zip code may have coverage with the give-back benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every month. Look. With the uncertainty of the virus and vaccines, you need to get everything you're entitled to. Here's the bottom line. Call to get significant benefits at no additional cost and see if your zip code has coverage with the give back benefit. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare coverage helpline. You can too. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-916-5591. That's 1-800-916-5591 now. 
It's always a good day for a car wash at Miller Mall Car Wash. But just to be safe, watch Caitlin's Car Wash Forecast weekday mornings on CBS 3 This Morning with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt. Sponsored by Miller Mall Car Wash. Only on live, local, CBS 3. Kristen Bakke is as local as our evening news. I'm from here. This is my home. I learned how to do a left-handed layup right there. At that hoop. That exact hoop. Covering the communities she calls home, too. You know, there's nothing phony about it. That's that's who she is. She's just a natural at it. So I, I enjoy watching her because she's so good at what she does. Leaders at Hibby and Tackanay are scrambling. Back in Menorca Mining. Mining family heritage and iron mining history. For everything local, watch Kristen Vaki on live local CBS3. School visits are an important part of kind of being a part of the community outside of the TV station here. When I was in sixth grade, that's when I learned meteorology was it for me. Being on the other side of that now, for me being able to kind of pursue that, it's important for me to then be able to get back into the community. If I can go into a classroom and get just one person who was interested or just one person who, you know, leaves there knowing like, wow, I learned something new today. For me, I did my job and that means a lot to me. Watch meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt weekdays at 5 a.m. Medicare Decomplicated, brought to you by UCARE. Question, how much does a Medicare plan cost? Zero dollars. That's where they start with UCARE Medicare Advantage plans. There's a plan for everyone with a range of benefits and costs. See? Decomplicated. Get your news on the go. The CBS3 mobile app. A U.S. Olympic gymnast is the latest person to test positive after officials reported at least 10 new cases connected to the Games yesterday, including the first cases among athletes in the Olympic Village. Lucy Kraft has more from Tokyo, including the latest on a U.S. tennis star. The hopes of tennis star Coco Gauff were dashed Sunday after the 17-year-old sensation announced she had tested positive for COVID ending her chances of competing in Japan this summer. At this time, unfortunately, we don't have much more information. The news apparently caught tennis officials by surprise. This comes on top of USA Basketball losing point guard Bradley Beal last week after he was placed in COVID health and safety protocols. As more Olympic teams descended on the Japanese capital over the weekend, two South African soccer players tested positive for COVID, the first cases of athlete infections at the Olympic Village. The South African Football Association said the whole team is now under quarantine, with their first match just three days away. They will only be allowed to compete if they test negative six hours before the match. While Olympics officials say there is zero chance the Games will end up triggering a super spreader event, many residents here aren't buying it. Two separate news polls over the weekend found an overwhelming majority of residents are skeptical that the Games can be held safely. Local opposition to the games isn't the only challenge this week. A major sponsor, Toyota, has pulled its Olympics advertising from Japanese TV and said its president won't attend the opening ceremony, a sign of concern over being associated with these trouble-plagued games. Lucy Kraft, CBS News, Tokyo. Coming up on the CBS Evening News Profiles in service. Meet Dr. Andy, how this 101-year-old pediatrician and World War II veteran is still giving back to his country. That's all tonight right here on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health Pharmacies. Keeping things safe, simple, and convenient through mail, local delivery, drive through and curbside pickup services. I'm Carrie Harris, owner of Diabetic and Comfort Shoes. We have been in business in the Northland, helping you with your everyday foot problems stemming from diabetes to plantar fasciitis for the past 17 years. Stop in and see the complete line of men's and women's shoes, from SAS to Allegria to Vionic, for those millions of people battling plantar fasciitis. And we still have a great selection of comfortable shoes shoes for diabetics. Medicare and Minnesota health care approved. Remember, no foot problem is too big or too small. We'll find the way to your soul. Don't miss Douglas County's Head of the Lakes Fair happening six days straight beginning Tuesday, July 20th through Sunday, July 25th. Enjoy unlimited rides all day every day with our $25 armbands and the Northland's largest midway only at the Head of the Lakes Fair. Take part in our traditional and fun daytime events like demo derby, a hypnotist, auto racing, along with a BMX stunt show, and live music at night. For more information about Head of the Lakes Fair, visit us online at headofthelakesfairgrounds.com.
Black Bear Casino Resort invites you to join us for our anniversary weekend celebration. We start the weekend Friday night, August 13th, with legendary comedian Gabriel Iglesias and the Beyond the Fluffy World Tour. Go big or go home in the Otter Creek Event Center. Then the Bear heads outdoors Saturday, August 14th, with Tantric, Drowning Pool, Kinder, and Scott Staff, the voice of Creed. For more information and to get your tickets, go to BlackBearCasinoResort.com. Make the bear your place for a weekend anniversary celebration. Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show! This show is about connection. Not even 2020 and socially distancing ourselves are going to get in the way of that. Are we six feet apart? Let's just check it out. <laughs> Watch the Kelly Clarkson Show. Woo! The Kelly Clarkson Show on CBS3. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a look back at today's top story and we'll see what's coming up at 6. At 5, we heard from a local cattle farmer who says he's having a tough time finding feed for his cattle herd because of the drought. And if the conditions continue and grass remains dry, he may not be able to support as many cows come next year. And tonight at 6, we hear from local golf course owners about the challenges of maintaining the green during dry summer months and from some golfers who say they don't mind the dry spell. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. See you at 6.